unloading sequence. So, uh, if I have one reservoir here, okay, and I have perforations and fluid will be flowing through this one, I have one tubing, I have one packer, okay, and if I have density rho, let us say completely liquid is there. So, density rho, rho is not changing because fluid, let us say water is there or oil is there, o oil and water will be density will be changing, but it will be very low negligible actually because of this hydrostatic thing. If it is gas, then uh, density will be varying, but uh, for liquid, again density will be changing, but it is not uh, so much significant. So, H rho G equals P, okay. let us say this one. PWF okay, at this point. Now, uh, it is filled with completely liquid. Liquid means its gradient is G, gradient they are saying G A. Okay. So, gradient G means like uh, H is changing. Okay. So, if I see, if I draw a line, so because PWF, okay this one and if you move from bottom to surface and if you take pressure let us say this is 1, 2, 3, 4. So, uh, pressure 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay. So, pressure if you take at these points, so pressure will be going down, 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 down because hydrostatic pressure H is going, H is getting reduced. So, that is why this uh, straight line curve is coming. We are assuming density not changing okay. and G anyway you cannot change we do not have right to change actually, okay. only God can change. Now, uh, you have several valves fixed already at the beginning, okay. 1, 2, 3, 4 valves are fixed here. Okay. Initially, all valves are open. Now, you start injecting gas. Okay. From surface, you are injecting gas. First uh, valve open, gas injected. So, when gas injected, lots of bubble will be created in the first valve. Okay. Okay. So, you created one, one, lots of bubbles are created. So, what will happen? This is continuous liquid and this is ge getting lots of. So, you, so, your hydrostatic pressure at this one is reduced, okay. Rho is reduced, rho dust, rho dust is reduced, okay. That is place, but bottom of this valve is not reduced, upper only, only reduced. So, upper one, your curve is going like this, okay. So, pressure is changed, okay. Now, Next, what you do from when, when first time you are injecting gas, first fully liquid filled, then first valve opened and injected gas, hydrostatic pressure reduced, top portion, bottom portion not change. Then next, you inject further gas, activate second valve, this uh, top valve you close, okay. Second valve, so hydrostatic pressure of this whole column is changed, okay. Now, you in, uh, activate third valve whole column changed, bottom portion not change. So, gradually first valve, second valve, third valve you in activate. Then finally, you reach to the operating valve, not the bottom most one. Bottom most may or may not be the operating valve. So, if engineer feels that this will be my optimal uh, production rate and this is the optimal uh, proper valve location, then that may not be the bottom most one. That may be middle one also or that may be bottom one also. Okay. So, so, gradually, uh, so you see the figure sequence A, B, C, D, E. Okay. So, initially uh, fully liquid filled, then this is gas, then this is gas. You are injecting on the surface actually, this is annular area from surface you are injecting gas, gas, gas. Okay. Full area is gas, gas. Now, this is your operating valve and you are getting production. Okay. So, your the gradient line also changed. Okay. Initially, it was a completely straight line. Now, it is changed like this because of this uh, gas injection. Okay. And this picture is taken from uh, Petroleum Production Engineering, uh, Guo Galambar book. This is called unloading sequence. Unloading sequence is completely loaded with liquid. Now, injecting gas and slowly uh, you are removing gas from one section, two section, three section, four section. Okay. And then whole system is, uh, whole annular area is filled with gas. And inside tubing also, lots of bubbles will be there. So, you are not creating mist flow 
or other type of flow you are getting bubble flow okay so uh, how i i'm talking about every time this there is a gas lit valve so gas lit valve how does it look like so gas lit valve will have like this uh, one spring loaded section okay and there is one diaphragm okay this area is filled with a uh, nitrogen normally okay nitrogen dome we don't fill with oxygen uh, in a pressure system uh, we try to avoid oxygen or other active uh, gases rather we put inactive gas like nitrogen so that if there is any leakage or anything there should not be some safety issue okay and this will be spring loaded okay and there is one stem okay this is a stem this is called body valve body this is spring this is called diaphragm okay and there is one orifice okay this is port or orifice okay this is upstream pressure this is downstream pressure okay this is one gas lit valve actually so upstream pressure uh, is if upstream pressure is casing pressure is pressure valve is if it is tubing pressure then it is called fluid valve okay so how does it work so if upstream pressure is very high okay so it is like this i have one nitrogen dome okay they say i have one piston okay and <coughs> uh like this okay i want piston uh just wait i'll explain it mm, okay so assume this is a piston okay and this is sealed this area or maybe diaphragm soft diaphragm like a lungs okay it can very flexible membrane is there and this is filled with nitrogen or one spring also can be there okay now it create very high pressure okay because of high pressure you are pushing it up this diaphragm pushing it up when you are pushing it up you see there is one path flow path at the bottom okay so this gas will come and it will enter through this so this is upstream downstream okay so if this side my tubing maybe tubing okay this is casing so uh, casing means like annular area from annular area you are giving very high pressure because of very high pressure your diaphragm part will move up okay because the diaphragm is very high so diaphragm part will be moving up when it is moving up the connected stem this stem you see i made it red uh, uh, this stem will move up okay when it is moving up you can see one port will be created uh, one flow path is getting created okay you see one flow path is getting created okay when flow path is getting created fluid from casing will enter into your tubing okay the gas whatever you are injecting it will be entering to your tubing and here the tubing also having effect on opening on this uh, stem or orifice this is orifice i already told right this is orifice okay okay so uh, casing pressure or casing fluid or gas will be entering to the tubing because of this mechanism now why this sort of so complex you can make simple one hole and you can inject because you want to control the valve from surface you are controlling you don't have any control over uh, the valve when it is inserted in the well bore what happens you insert it in the well bore you insert it in the well bore and you cannot go and you cannot 
open the valve or close the valve so from surface pressure actually if you reduce pressure automatically this orifice path will be closed if you increase pressure again it will be open so from surface pressure controlling only you are increase uh, you are opening or closing the valve okay so this is the beauty of the system uh, so in previous I already told that uh, there is balance valve, unbalanced valve. Unbalanced valve means it will be controlled by tubing pressure also. In balanced valve, if tubing pressure will not affect the flow rate or valve opening and closing. How this valve is working? Here you can see the tubing, okay, tubing coming and here is one valve, okay. It, there will be one mandrel and valve will be there, okay. Now this is the casing pressure. This is called casing pressure or the pressure you created from the surface okay from surface you are creating that pressure that pressure will be controlling your valve and this is tubing okay this is tubing pressure okay so normally they are saying p t tubing pressure casing pressure is a p c now how this valve is working you see this uh, i'll draw again so it will understand okay like this uh, then you have okay and uh, you have one below stem then stem is going here opening closing valve right it is having system like this it is like uh, casing hole is here okay casing hole is here and this gas will go to your tubing okay casing hole is here Okay, approximately I am drawing like this. This is stem. This is this gas will go to tubing. Okay. Okay, this is going to tubing and casing gas is coming like this. Okay, so uh, here term is there PD or diaphragm, this is called diaphragm, this is diaphragm. So diaphragm pressure and AB below pressure, below diaphragm. What about the notation? I am using that one. AB below pressure and PC, this is called PC, I already told this is casing pressure and here pressure will be tubing pressure pt okay and here this stem this area this area is ap okay port area uh, so how much pressure will be required to close or open the valve here ab let's say assume ab uh, assume ab 10 inch square okay this is ab you can see 10 inch square and you are giving pressure, let us say casing pressure you are giving 100 bar, 200 bar and AP, AP is here okay, at the bottom port area. So there is 0.1, the same pressure you are applying. Okay, So AB needs 100 times more force to open. Okay, So because its area AB is higher and AP is lower, so pressure difference will be there. So for same uh, stem movement AB needs more 100 times pressure than whatever AP needs. If you want to open using AP or tubing pressure, you have to give 100 times more pressure. But if you are using PC casing, casing pressure, so pressure will be very low. 
okay so that's why from surface you can control actually so tubing pressure will not be affecting much but it is having effect but not much but casing pressure is having more effect because uh, it is 100 times more than your tubing pressure okay now only case, casing pressure operated valve so unbalanced valve valve with pressure charge dome as loading element tubing pressure supplied opening force called unbalanced pressure valve balanced pressure valve tubing pressure has no effect okay you should remember this one balance when we are talking about balanced pressure tubing pressure should not be any effect so here you can see so this valve basically controlled by your casing only okay so although this is showing uh, some pressure but this will be almost negligible so pressure will be coming basically from casing okay the casing pressure will be controlling so this is below or diaphragm okay notations are almost same a b or capital b or small b a p and um, dome this is called nitrogen dome or dome or sometime nitrogen dome so we we, we we use inactive gas so let's see opening pressure of valve under operating condition so f o is the opening uh, summation of all forces opening force opening force summation of all forces summation all forces okay f c equals summation of closing closing force summation of all closing forces so f c equals p d a b p d is here a b is here this is dome pressure this is nitrogen filled dome so p, uh, the pressure in the nitrogen is pd and the area is called ab so the closing force fc equals this one okay so f opening force equals pc casing pressure ab minus ap ab minus ap plus pt ap you can see pt pt is here ap is here okay so this uh, this area this one ap and pressure is pt so force is ap into pt so you can remember force equals p into a okay pressure into area right so i am putting this one pt into a and pc casing pressure ab minus ap so how much casing pressure is coming casing pressure is here or here okay pc so pressure casing pressure will be ab minus ap into pc okay now ap by ab equals r this is ratio is called r okay now pc becomes p d minus p t r 1 minus r okay so tubing effect factor so tubing or t e f equals 1 r 1 minus r and tubing effect equals p t r 1 minus r okay so this formula you should remember later we will solve problem using this formula here uh, you using the previous formula you have to solve the problem a pressure valve is located 6000 feet okay so here 6000 feet okay valve is here okay pressure in the dome uh, so here nitrogen dome will be there okay dome pressure pd is given 700 psi and tubing pressure p 
pt given 500 pressure and find the casing pressure uh, pc uh, casing pressure no? pc equals uh, casing pressure is uh, okay pc you have to find and ab is given if i if you see the valve actually i am using common notation so i have given name like this okay then this is stem and this is pc pc this is pt pd p dome pressure is given uh, 700 psi and pt given 500 and um, pc not given ab given a below ab is equal to 1 uh, 0 inch square ap this is ap ap is given 0 0.1 square ok now using previous uh, formula you can see p c equals p d minus p t r 1 minus r so this will give uh, an r equals 0 0.1 by 1 equals 0 0.1 ratio ok r equals a P by A B. Okay. Uh, so therefore P C equals P D is given 700, uh, 500 is given uh, P T R 0 0.1 divided 1 minus 0 0.1. So this will give 722 PSI. Okay. And T E F in previous formula I, we have seen. Uh, R 1 minus R, R 1 minus R equals 0 0.1, 1 minus 0 0.1 equals, it is giving 0 0.111. Now, uh, TE, T being effect equals PT into TEF equals uh, 500 into 0 0.1111 it is giving 56 okay now if pt is 0 pt is 0 means it will be requiring 722 plus 56 so 778 so if there is no tubing pressure so casing pressure must be 778 psi Okay, uh, this is called maximum pressure, casing pressure you have to apply uh, if tubing pressure is 0. Uh, this is called maximum opening pressure P. So, thank you very much for today's lecture. Tomorrow we will start uh, some more calculation and some more topics on gas lip system. Thank you very much.